Now that we have implementations of a stack and a queue, we can actually write some code that utilizes them. A classic example of an of a application that uses a stack is a reverse Polish notation calculator. Uh, it's possible that you have worked with one of these, though most people don't uh, these days because calculators have gotten where they kind of use an algebraic notation. Um, reverse Polish uses what's called postfix notation, and this is where operators come after the operands that they work on. The advantage of reverse Polish is that you never need parentheses to specify order of operations. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to create a new package. I'm going to call it util. Uh, actually, let's call it utility. Turns out there are lots of things called util. Utility. Okay. And inside of here, I am going to make an object and we'll call it RPN calc. So an, R, an RPN calculator, if I want to do, instead of doing 2 plus 3, I would do 2, 3 plus. Now you might wonder what's the advantage of this. Well, think of it this way, 2 plus 3 times 5. If you want the addition to happen before the multiplication, you have to insert parentheses using normal notation, which is called infix notation. There's no way around it because we just have this rule of precedence that the multiplication happens before addition. However, if I were to do this postfix, the 2 plus 3 times 5 would actually be 3, 5 times 2 plus. And if I wanted the addition to happen First, I could do 2, 3, plus 5 times. Okay, so by specifying the arguments in different orders, I can actually get the order of operation that I want instead of having to rely on arbitrary precedence rules to decide it for me and then using parentheses to override that. So that's the advantage of a reverse Polish calculator. To implement this, I'm going to make an apply method inside of our object here. And we're going to pass in some arguments, which will be a sequence of strings. So these strings would be the two, the three, the plus, the five, and the times, or whatever. I also want our, well, we'll, we'll start here. Um, and then this would give us back a double. We'll add some features to this in just a second. So. I've stated that this uses a stack to, uh, to evaluate things. So let's make a stack. And this stack is going to be a stack of doubles because it stores just the values that we are working on. And we'll use our array stack for this. This stack does not get the operators. Instead, it, it only stores the values that are part of the calculation. And the way it works is anytime it sees a number, it just pushes that number onto the stack. When it sees an operator, it pops things off the stack, performs the operation, and pushes the result. So this would, would push a two, push a three. When it gets to the plus, it would pop both of them, add them together, and then push a five back. Then it would push this five on, and then the times would pop the two fives, multiply them, and push a 25. So when you're done, the, there should be one element in the stack and that will be your answer. So we want to run through all of the arguments here. And uh, just in case, I want to make sure that no argument is empty because that would cause us a problem. If arg.nonempty, then I want to match this argument against some different possibilities. Well, it could be a plus. Okay, if it's a plus, then I am supposed to pop off two elements and push their sum together. So I can simply say push of stack dot pop plus stack dot pop. Turns out I can do the same thing for multiplication, except instead of doing addition, we will do multiplication. 
Oh, to make this code happy, I can go ahead and put stack.pop here at the end because that's what's going to give us back our value. We also need to have support for subtraction and division. Now these actually take a little bit of extra work because, so for plus and minus, it doesn't matter what, uh, what order, two plus three is equal to three plus two. But when this is subtraction, order matters. Two minus three is not the same as three minus two. And two, three minus should be two minus three. So I can't just take the first pop and subtract the second pop. I need to pop one element, store it in a temporary variable, and then I can push on the result of taking the other argument and subtracting that temporary from it. And that code can also be used for division because division is also sensitive to the order. It's non-commutative. Yeah. Um, now what if it's not a plus times minus or divide and the simplest thing we can do is assume in that situation that it is some uh, numeric value and so we can push onto the stack that value converted to a double okay this is seems like reasonably happy code uh, but of course we would need to actually test it well let's go ahead and inside of here we'll create a new package dot utility and inside of there we will make a new class for test rpn calc and we should have some tests inside of here. I left open my test array stack because I want to have easy access to these two imports. So as before I'll probably need to make a calculator. Actually no it's an object. So okay so we'll just say at test. What can we do? Um, we could do some set of fairly basic operation tests def basic ops and assert equals we need to say what we're going to do so it's the expected value comma what we're actually going to to do and these return doubles to us. And it turns out that assert equals on doubles is a little bit different in that it takes a third argument, which is the uh, precision. We know that double arithmetic, you know, we've seen before that if you do 1.0 minus 0.9 minus 0.1, you don't get zero. So you generally can't check for equality in the normal sense, unless it turns out the numbers are all integers, and then the, the arithmetic is exact. So because our numbers are all integers, we can say that our allowed error is zero here. We should pass in our arguments. How about just two, three, plus, except I need to split this on spaces. And that should be equal to five. We need to import our RPN calc. And I'm, there we go, close parentheses there. We run that green bar, probably a good idea to test each of the other operations. So we're doing addition, multiplication, subtraction, division, and for the multiplication, I'll stick with those same operators. So, but how about nine and three, and then 9 and 3. 9 minus 3 is 6. 9 divided by 3 is 3. Okay, that's all happy. Uh, let's make another set of tests that involve two operations. So 
So like the 2 plus 3, 5 times. And in fact, I'll do this one maybe. So this was a 6, 3, divide. So this one should be 25. This one should be 2. Our earlier value had been 6. I don't know. Uh, 7 plus. So this should be 13. And this one had been 3. And we'll subtract 3 off from it. So it should be 0. And we get a green bar. OK. So we've done some unit testing. We have a basic RPN calculator. We'd like to add some features to this, and then we want to integrate it into our drawing program. We'll come back and we'll do those things in the next video.